Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Again, if you got to look at your table of contents, you go ahead with your ass up. And look at the table of contents. It's the last book of the Old Testament before we hit Matthew. So if you want to go all the way to Matthew, then you go forehand. Go ahead. Do what you're going to do. Whatever makes sense to you, as long as you get the Malachi. Chapter 3. Starting at verse 8. Malachi chapter 3. If you're able to stand, let us stand for the reading and the reverence of God's word. Malachi chapter 3. Starting in verse 8. Now I'm going to be reading from the NLT version of the Bible. If you don't have it, you can look at the screens in front of me or behind. Malachi 3, 8 through 10 reads as this. Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and offering due to me. You are under a curse for your whole nation has been cheated on me. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, this sounds like a promise right here, says the Lord of Heaven's army. I will open up the windows of heaven for you, and I will pour you out a blessing so great that you won't have room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Let me read that again. I, if you do, says the Lord of Heaven's army. I will open up the windows of heaven for you. That sounds real personal. For you. I will pour you out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. the preacher's going to preach about God's financial plan. God's financial plan. Father God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we magnify you and we honor you, Lord. God, because there is no one like you, Father. God, we thank you for the privilege that we have that we get to worship. We get to honor you. We get to praise you. We get to magnify you. We get to serve. We get to give, God. We get to live for you, God. We thank you for the honor and the privilege that it is, God, to serve in your army, Father. God, we just pause right now to say thank you, Father God, for everything, every provision, every door that you have opened, every way that you have made. God, there's someone in this room right now, God, that is just, that they're going from paycheck to paycheck, God, and they're trying to, they're robbing Peter to pay Paul, God, they're, 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 they're trying to make ends meet, God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that they would take hold of your word, the authority of your word this morning, Father God. They will receive your word, God. They will obey your word with their hearts, oh God, and that they will respond to your word as, as an act of obedience, Father. Told us in your word in James chapter 1 that when we take in your word and when we apply your words, God, that we will be blessed because of it. So we thank you, Father. We praise you, we glorify you, and we magnify you. And we ask it all in Jesus' name that we pray and all of God's people said, Yes. Amen and amen. As you take your seat, say your neighbor again. So we're talking about God's financial plan. God's financial plan. If you like me and you're on the internet all the time, you come to realize that Google.com is simply amazing. Some love it. Some hate it, but I confess, Google is my trump card when I need to know something really fast. Recently, I searched out in the search part, ways to get rich, and this is what I found. 
business magnate and most influential investor of the 20th century, Warren Buffett, gives 10 investment strategies to build your wealth. Number one, Warren Buffett says, invest in yourself before you invest in anything else. Number two, determine as early as you can what you want to do with your life and do it. Number three, watch your small expenses. Amen. Number four, keep cash in reserve. Number five, invest in what you know and understand. Number six, buy quality. Number seven, be patient. Number seven, be patient. <laughs> and number seven, be patient. Number eight, give up, give up something less valuable to gain something more valuable. Number nine, put as little money into your house as possible or even rent. And number ten, dare to be different. Great advice that Warren Buffett shares here that I plan personally to be able to put some of these things into place. But that was one thing that Brother Warren left off that's essential. For, for Christians, there's no financial plan without giving 10% of your earnings to God. Okay. Let me say this again because I need the same crowd that I had with me last week. I need y'all with me this week. For the believer of Jesus Christ, there is no financial plan without giving 10% of your earnings to God. Just in case you forget real quick, just in case you forget, everything that you have, God owns it. Everything that you have from your time to your talents to your gift to your money to your health to your house to your car, to your clothes, everything that you have, God owns it. And he has only given us temporary stewardship over yeah. yeah. what belongs to him. Yeah. So in all the things that Brother Warren talks about, these are great things, these are great things to put in place. But for the believer, there's a number 11. Amen. Well, for the believer, that's a number one. Amen. That number one for us yeah. is to be able to align ourselves under the open heaven of God. So that we can be able to receive everything that God has for us. But the first thing that we must do, this is what I'm starting to realize, saints of God, is that all of us in this room want to be blessed. Oh my goodness. Yeah. 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 Don't y'all look at me like that this morning. All of us in this room, we want to be blessed. And more specifically, we want to be, we want to be blessed financially in our lives. We want to be able to live in the overflow. We want to be able to have more than enough. We want to be able to have more money than we have this. But the thing that we miss about all of that. The blessings of God are waiting on us to act in obedience and to, in response of the word of God in doing what the pastor swims in giving our tithes and our offerings. The prophet Malachi see you having to preach to these hard-headed stubborn Israel folks. These jokers are doing everything in their power to go against the commandments of God. Leadership is corrupted. The priests are not aligning their lives with the word of God. They're not obeying God and doing what they're supposed to do. And so because leadership is not doing what they're supposed to do, the flock is taking their cues from leadership. Malachi has to go and he deals with them in the earlier chapters to deal with them because you have the priests that are divorcing their wives for no reason whatsoever to marry other women who serve foreign gods. Even though God told them not to do this, they are divorcing their wives for a little reason. But God, I came home, she didn't have my food ready. They divorced <laughs> Silly reasons they're doing this thing. And so Malachi is having to go and talk to them and say, listen, everything that you do, you're wondering, you're wondering why you're not being blessed. 
Yes. You're wondering why things are not going your way in your life because you are not aligning yourselves up with the word of God. Malachi goes in hard on the leadership, on the priest. You know better. If anyone should be walking out the commandments of God, it should be you. Why? Because the people, the pews, take their cue from the pulpit. The pews take their cue from the leadership. And Malachi is saying, if we want the people to go in the direction to be able to follow God, the leadership has to be able to follow in the direction of the word of God first. So that the people can be able to have a clear example of what obedience looks like. And so he's having to talk to them over and over and over again. It's almost like he's saying it's going in one ear and out the other ear. It's almost like parents, y'all know y'all can be able to attest to this, that you're telling your kids, hey, when I get home from work, I want the kitchen clean. Not clean in the parents' mind is, I want the floor supply. I want the dishes washed, not just washed, but I want them dry and put up in the cupboard. I want everything in the Now, what the child heard was, let me rinse these dishes out. Lay out a towel on the counter. And let God dry the dishes.
Who according to Psalm 24 says, the earth is the Lord's and everything that's in it. This same God that owns everything, we have the audacity to be greedy and stingy towards a generous and gracious God that looks beyond our trifles <laughs> and our faithfulness and blesses us every day. Okay, let me say it again. How can we be stingy towards a God that when he should have killed me a long time ago? He allows me to take in his air every day. But yet I'm stingy with what already belongs to him. This is the issue that Malachi is up against. He's telling them that yes, 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 you, the priests, the leaders, the people, you have all robbed God by not giving God what belongs to him. And that's 10%. 10% of your earnings. And he gives us 90% to be good stewards. Tithing is a hard issue. Because they had a heart that was not towards God and the things of God, they failed to make God a number one priority in their life. Because they didn't value obeying God. Obedience was not a priority in their lives to be able to do. And they missed out. They were missing out on so many blessings in their lives. They were missing out on so much of what God wanted to do in their lives because they failed to obey. I got a question to ask somebody today. How many of us are missing out on supernatural blessings? How many of us are missing out on promotions? How many of us are missing out on, I'm talking about, on knockout blessings that God wants to do in our lives because we have simply failed to take heed to his word. Now I told you last week, I'm not trying to get anything from you. I'm trying to get something to you. Because if I'm telling you, if I was if I was talking about how you was going to be blessed in the next 90 days, or you was going to get a turnaround blessing tomorrow, Sister Maggie even talked about how your season was getting ready to change. And if I just came up here and preached about how your season was about to change, this church would go cuckoo for cocoa pops. But that same energy that we should have when we talk about, listen, the blessing of God coming our way, we should have that same praise. We should have that same worship when it comes to obeying God and his word. James says, James chapter 1 says, listen, when you obey the word of God and you take heed to the word of God and you apply the word of God to your life, you will be blessed. All right. Malachi says, they have a hard issue. They're stingy towards God with what already belongs to him. Why is it that they are stingy towards God? Because when you are greedy and you lack contentment, these things will block the supernatural blessings of God from coming your way. Let me say it again. When you, when you lack contentment and when you are greedy, it hinders your blessings from God. He said, you cheated me. The tithes and offering that are due me. He says, you are under a curse for your whole nation has been cheated. He says, has been cheating me. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse so that there will be food enough in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's army, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to be able to receive it. Try me. Put me to the test. Pastor Spoons, what are you trying to get us to see? What is it that you're trying to get us to do? I believe this about the word of God. The word of God is not, is not just for us just to be able to hear, but it's for us to be able to hear and then to be able to act on the word of God, Sister Greta, so that we can be able to see results from that. So the first thing that we got to be able to do when it comes to giving, when it comes to tithing, our whole mindset has to change. We can no longer say, I can't afford to tithe. Can't say I can't afford to give. You cannot afford.
afford not to give. You can't afford not to talk. God has been just that good and great to us. So if we are going to move into verse 10, the latter part of verse 10, where he talks about opening the windows of heaven for us and pouring us out of blessings that will be so great that we will have, that we won't have enough room to be able to take it in. First of all, you have to realize I've dropped the ball. You have to realize, God, I have messed up. I have made a mistake. I have not made you number one when it comes to my finances. I have not valued you. I have not made you a priority in my life. I have budget for everything else, but I don't have a budget line for God. Realize. Realize I've dropped the ball. And once you realize that you have dropped the ball, then you repeat. Repeat just simply means that you turn into a you turn into a different direction and move forward. Yeah. Yeah. And that you make up in your mind now that from this day forward, I am going to give in my tithes and in my offering. And I believe I have some witnesses in this house this morning that can be able to testify to the fact that you had the choice. Either I pay a bill. Oh, I pay my tithes. And you sitting there trying to figure out, God, you know, God, you understand that if I pay this light bill, if I use the tithe money to pay my light bill, God, surely you don't want me to live in darkness. <laughs> surely you die. You are the light, God. You, you don't want me to live in darkness anymore. Surely, God, you will understand just this one time. But how many people know that just this one time becomes a continual practice that you begin to do over and over and over again? And every time you get paid, tithing is never an option because we haven't made it a priority. But there's some in here that you've been there. You've been knocking at that door. You've been in between. You've been in those places where you had a choice. Either I tithe. Oh, I pay this bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you trusted God enough. Yeah. 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 Let me say it again. You trusted God enough yeah. and said, God, I am going to honor you first yeah. in my giving. Yeah. And when you made that action, when you made that decision, and that decision became an action, and you put that action into place, you saw that God made a way. It might have been you called Amber and said, listen, I'm in between blessings right now. When I get my money, you get your money. Can I set up a payment plan? Through to be 
be able to give the money to me, but that you can be able to change the channel up and you can allow for money to be able to come from any direction when I honor you can do what I am supposed to do. So you got to realize you dropped the ball. Somebody said, I got to realize I dropped the ball. Realize you dropped the ball. You said, man, Pastor Swells, why are you talking about this? Again, I'm not trying to get nothing from you. I'm trying to get something to you. I'm trying to get you blessed beyond measure. I'm trying to position you to be able to be blessed by God. Once you realize you dropped the ball, you repent, and you turn in another direction, and you say, God, from this day forward, I'm going to obey your word. Then I might be blessed. Once I, once I realize I've dropped the ball, then I need to put God first. Somebody say, put God first. Because once I put God first, that means that I value him. And because I value him, now he becomes a priority in my life. That when I'm making my monthly budget with all of my bills, that first and foremost, God is number one at that list. And if you've been like me, you've been in some places where you made that budget out and you knew what you had to tie, you knew all the other bills that you had going on, but at the end of it, it looks like you have more bills than you had money. But at the end of the month, because you honor God in your giving, God made up the lack. When I value him, making him a priority. Get this. That, that right there then makes me a candidate for God's promises. Amen. Look at this. Look at verse 10. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heavens, our army. I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour you out a blessing so great that you won't have enough room to be able to receive it. He said, try me in this. Try me in this and see what I will do in your life. When we make God first, we become a candidate. Somebody say a candidate. For God's promises. We set ourselves up to be blessed by God beyond measures because we have made a decision and we're acting on the word of God and we are choosing to we are choosing we are choosing to obey God to do what God says in his word it makes us a candidate for God's blessings we read the scripture I heard preachers preach about this scripture and they read verse 10 but never read verse 8 and 9. Because if you want him to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have enough room to be able to receive it, you have to give first your 10%. Yeah. We want the blessing, but we don't want the responsibility of what we need to do first to initiate the blessings and the promises that God has for our lives. But when we do that, saints of God, we position ourselves. Well, look at this. Look at verse 11. I love this part. He says, not only will I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have enough room to receive it. He says, your crops will be abundant. For I will guard them from the incest and the disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's army. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven's army. He says, listen, I will protect your stuff. Will you make me a number one priority in your giving and give in your tithes and give me your tithes and your offering? He says, I will keep, I will, I will rebuke the devourer of your stuff. When, somebody say when. When. When you make the decision to trust God and to give. When we make that decision to put God first, when we realize we dropped the ball, when we put God first and value him and make him a priority, we, we, we become a candidate for God's promises. But get this, we profit from God's provisions. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I will rebuke the devourer off of your stuff. I will keep the insects. I will keep the enemy off of your stuff. I will do things for you that you can't even do yourself. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who you know and how places. I will go beyond high places and do some things on your behalf. All because why? You honored me in giving in your tithes and your offering. Jesus, God tells them, he 
says, when you bring the tithes and make sure that I, we have everything that we need in the storehouse, in the temple, to do what we need to do. Now back then, the offering, the offering that they used at this time, it was used to take care of the priest. The priest was responsible for doing his priestly duty, being able to be in the word of God, being with the people. And so it was the, they made it so that the priest would not have to work an outside job, but all they had to do was full-time ministry. Right. And he told them, he said, listen, he's telling them, when you don't give, this enables the priest in the temple yes. not to be able to function the way that they need to function. But then I said, I knew he was coming to it. He's trying to get some money in his pocket. No, I'm, I'm trying to share something with you so they can show you how to get blessed. There's a story in the Bible about a widow. She had a little bit of meal left in the jar. A little bit of meal left. Prophet came to her. And she said, he began talking to her. He said, listen, can you fix me something? She said, all I got is a little meal left. I'm getting ready to make some. I'm, I'm getting ready to make some food for me and my son, and then we are going to die. He said, oh, "Man, you ain't got to do that." He said, "All I need you to do, I want you to trust the God in me, and I want you to go and fix me a biscuit." And when she went and fixed the man of God a biscuit, the Bible says that God provided for her in supernatural ways. That when you bless the man of God, when you bless the woman of God, God will bless you as well. Yeah. When you bless the man of God, when you bless the woman of God, God will bless you instead. That's what you're talking about. And I ain't got no money, baby, to give you. If it's a prayer that you give on my behalf, if it's a sandwich that you give on my behalf, if it's a, a, a prayer that you give on my behalf, when you serve the man or woman of God, God will see about you. What do I do? Do I trust this man that just popped up out of nowhere? Yeah. Or do I go ahead with my preordained plans? She trusted the God on the inside of the prophet. And because she did that, God blessed her. Why? Because of her obedience. All right. yeah. Yeah. Later on in the story, a few chapters later, son dies. Yes, sir. Son dies. Comes, prophet comes back. And she said, man, well, why, why are you doing this thing, preacher? Why are you doing this thing? He told her, tell me where your son is. Told her where her son was. And he went and he laid on top of that boy and breathed life back into him. Because I have to, but because I 
love God. Is there anybody in this house that loves God? I love him not because of his blessing, but I love him for who he is. able to do on my own. He is able to open up doors yeah. that no man can open. Yes. Yeah. Don't you know that in your consistent giving and tithing and making God first, God can advance you in your career? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know God can open up some doors for obedient people? Choose to obey his word, saints. Can't say we can't afford to give some of the stupid things we spend money on. Senseless things we spend money on. Amen. That have no value. We're trying to do all these get rich schemes and we leave God out of the whole picture. And we wonder why stuff is a disaster in our finances. Because we never included God. When you give, you tell God, God, you know how much I need this. God, you know I need it bad. But I choose to make you first and a priority in my life. And I choose to walk in obedience to your word. And when I walk in obedience to your word, God, I know I'm going to be blessed. Because get this, how God repays is not always with money. Sometimes more than you need money, you need more peace. You need more joy. And when I make him house, he does it. He does it every time. He does it every time in my life. Yes, God's financial plan is make me number one. Give me 10%. I give you stewardship over the 90%. I'm entrusting you. Well, first of all, it all belongs to me anyway. Yeah. But I'm trusting you with 90 to be good stewards to make wise choices with the 90. Yeah. But to give me the 10. Yes, sir. Now you said, Pastor Moses, but that was in the Old Testament. We're in the New Testament now. And the New Testament does not talk about Tied in ten percent. The New Testament talks about generous giving, spontaneous giving, sporadic giving. I'm telling you, God wants to do more in your finances than what's going on right now, and God wants us to include Him in the plans of our finances. So that he can be able to maximize what's there. Yeah. And he wants to give us greater wisdom over the 90% that we have. Yeah. To do better. Yeah. Because with the 90%, he's expecting us to make wise decisions. Right. He's expecting us to have a savings account. He's expecting us, expecting us, for us to invest. He's expecting for us to get some life insurance. Amen. Let me say it again. He's expecting for us to get some life insurance. Right. He's expecting us to be good stewards over what we already have. What sense does it make to have every pair of Jordans? Okay. And then Save for what you want to do. Yeah. 
use wisdom and make your financial decisions. Right. But have your ducks in a row at the same time. With the 90% that God has given us stewardship over, we need the wisdom of God. Somebody say wisdom. wisdom. We need the wisdom of God to know how to maximize what we get. God wants us to enjoy. God wants us to have nice things up and with that. But don't value nice things more than you value God. Amen. And the biggest sacrifice and gift that he's made I, I, I feel like doing this. Listen, I want to pray for folks. You say, Pastor Swims, listen, I'm a tither. I want, I, 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 I'm making up in my mind to be able to get there, and I want to see my finances explode. If, you, if that's you, meet me at this altar. I'm here. I'm, I'm here. the first one down here. I obey the word of God. I do what God says, but you know what? I don't want more money just for the sake of wanting more money. I want more money so that I can be able to bless more folks and be a blessing to other people, but I'm not waiting until I have more money to be able to do that, but I'm doing that on a small scale, but I'm going to get on the scale that I want to get at. And as I am obeying God's word, God's going to bless me because of it. I want to be blessed to be a blessing. Let me say it again. You know what, better yet, I don't want to be, I'm blessed to be a blessing. I am blessed right now to be a blessing, but it all starts with making God number one in my giving and saying, God, it already belongs to you. I'm giving it to you, Father, because it's yours. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every man, woman, boy, and girl that's at this altar right now. God, I thank you for the hearts to obey you, God, and to do what you said to do, Father. I ask you to pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would give us wisdom, Lord God, over the 90 that we have, God. Give us the wisdom to make better choices, Father God. Give us the wisdom, Lord God, to spend our money wiser, Father God. Give us wisdom, Father God, to make better decisions, Lord. God, I don't believe you You died for us to live in lack, Father God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would take us to a place of more than enough, God. That we have more money than we can bills, God. That we're not lacking in the area in our lives, God. That somebody's dream, God. They have the dream, Father God. They've been through school. They have student loans. But their desire, God, is to be able to pay for their children's education, Father. And I pray, God, that as they work with their hands, God, as they trust you, as they believe, oh God, that you will make it come to pass on their behalf, God. That you will open up doors, God. That you provide scholarships, Lord God. They will work their human responsibility, Father God. And that you will do it in the name of Jesus. Even though just contemplating and thinking, I don't know if I can do it, God. God says, trust me in this. Trust me in this and see what I will do in your life. Trust me in this. Test me in this. Prove me in this. I will do something amazing in your life. I will do something amazing in your life, God. God, I come against lack in the name of Jesus. I come against the mindset of lack, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, change our minds when it comes to money. Change our attitude when it comes to money, Father God. Oh, God, help us not to be greedy, God, but help us to be content, God, to know how to live with little, to know how to live with much, Father God, to know how to work with what we already got, God. I pray and ask you right now in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, that when we have dropped the ball and by not making you first, God, we're sorry and we repent, God. Oh, God, change our hearts, Lord God. Lord. Told us if we do it, God, yes. you will open the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings that there will not be enough room to be able to receive it. You 
said you will rebuke the devourer for our sake in the name of Jesus. And God, we receive it and we thank you today for what your word says. We walk in obedience, Father God, to be able to profit from your provision. So we thank you right now, God. Thank you right now, God. We thank you right now, God. Just as Sister Maggie said, that the seasons are changing, God. Ooh, God, we thank you that the seasons are changing, God. Stop trying to go around this. Stop trying to go around, God. But to do what you said to do, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We thank you. I pray, Lord God, that those here, Lord God, at this altar won't let those here in the pews won't let God. But not just them, but their kids, kids, and kids, kids, kids. And it will be generations of blessed individuals, Father. Yes, yes, yes. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We don't have to wait until it happens, God, but we praise you in advance. Yes. And we receive it in advance. Yes, yes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people say, Come on, if you're blessed in this house, put those blessed hands together. And give our God praise. Hallelujah. 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 God, you can trust us. God, you can trust us. God, you can trust us. In the name of Jesus. And she go on back to your seat, second name, and say, I'm blessed to bless. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I am blessed to be a blessing in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. There may be someone here that on top of God's financial plan, he 